Today's workplace is a complex ecosystem where each professional plays a critical role in achieving collective productivity. Identifying and utilizing each individual's inherent strengths and weaknesses is crucial for optimal performance and satisfaction. In this quick podcast, we discuss the Working Genius Model, a platform that transcends traditional personality tests to provide a deep understanding of our natural competencies and areas of development. Let's listen now. Welcome everyone to the podcast. I'm Janice Kleins, Marketing Manager for AOE, and today we are talking about personality tests. Um, Today, I'm joined by Kimberly Kaler, president of AOE, and she recently wrote a blog about unlocking your full potential. Are you working in your genius? So to not even going to get involved in what it is about, I'm just going to let Kimberly just dive right in and tell us what uh, your working genius is. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you. I'm excited to talk about uh, the working genius platform. So working genius is a... um, personality profile test, so that's a bit of a misnomer, and I'll explain why in a moment, um, that allows organizations to really make sure that their team members are working in what we call their genius. So different than other personality profile tests, whether you've done Myers-Briggs or DISC, I know there's one right now, the how you identify as a bird, there's a lot of different (laughs) ones and how they show up. This goes beyond personality tests, which typically identify what your strengths and weaknesses are. This gets to the core of where you find joy and maybe what exhausts you at work. And I'm really excited about this platform. I went and earned my certification in it because I find a lot of the other personality profiles, which I love. I'm a personality profile junkie. It's actually what I studied in my MBA program. I love a good personality profile test. Um, (laughs) But this, this actually helps you identify you know, not just what your what your strengths and your weaknesses, and we don't think it in that case, but really what motivates you, the work that you're drawn to. So it gives a lot of insight to organizations from a productivity standpoint. Okay. So you mentioned that you are a personality junkie. Tell me or tell our audience um, why personality tests are important to you. So tests like these allow us to better understand um, not only ourselves, but how we interact with others in in the organization. And obviously this applies to our home life and maybe our volunteer work, the other things we do that are community related too. Um, But so many lessons can be learned by understanding, in in some cases from a personality profile, um, just strengths and weaknesses. But in the case of the working genius, it helps us understand how we show up at work. Um, Are we the type of person that really loves crossing things off the list and and we're very tedious? Or are we the wanderer? Are we the one that really loves and excels at the brainstorming part of a process or everything in between? So the working genius actually has six genius types. We've got our wonder, which is that blue sky, the inventor that then helps take things down a notch in terms of, you know, inventing, solving a problem. Discernment are those that are really tapping into the genius of using intuition and knowledge and facts to move ahead, make decisions. Our galvanizers are those that really find energy from moving, movement in a project, movement on an idea. Enablement are those team members that always roll up their sleeves no matter what, love that teamwork environment. And then the tenacity are those that are really energized by taking things through the home stretch, that actual implementation. So every project we do actually has all six of these phases, but we tend to, as human beings, show up and gravitate toward the areas that actually bring us energy and bring us joy more. Again, don't think of things in terms of strengths and weaknesses. Okay. So tell our audience why the working genius model is different than anything you've seen or used in the past. Again, I, I'll reiterate, it has to do with looking at where you find joy in your work as compared to where you actually you know, exhaust a lot of energy. And you may not realize that. So for example, um, you know, my working genius is discernment and galvanizing and tenacity and enablement are my least areas of genius, but that doesn't mean I'm not good at it. I'm actually known for getting things done. 
but it sucks the life out of me. I would much rather be in a phase of galvanizing, moving on a project. Um, I have a lot of invention in me too. So the new big ideas and then moving them forward. Um, so having that understanding of where you are, not that you can, you know, go to your organization and say, hey, these are the two areas that I want to work in and <laughs> none of the other areas can come into your plate. But it also helps understand each other. So those that are maybe high in wonder and invention don't always in our hurried world get a chance to brainstorm, have the big ideas because we are moving, moving to enablement and tenacity all the time. Um, and those that are really governed by tenacity and enablement may be the ones at a meeting that are like, just tell me what to do. Let me move on it. Give me the action plan. So understanding all of this is really helpful just to the workplace. OK, so that kind of leads me into my next question. So in your blog, you mentioned the benefits of harmonizing with your genius. Can you elaborate on this? How does one harmonize with their genius? So a lot of it is understanding where you find joy and what maybe burns you out. Um, and a little plug, if you haven't listened to our podcast on uh, leadership burnout, that would be another great follow up to this one. But harmonizing means, um, you know, really identifying times and areas where you can work in your geni genius and then being mindful if you are being tasked to work in an area that's not your natural um, inclination. Doesn't mean that you don't work in that area, but recognize it may wear you out a bit. So, for example, if you are not high in wonder and invention, recognize that you're going into a meeting where that's required. And that's the purpose of the meeting. Um, and so understanding that you're going to be called on to to brainstorm and to have those big ideas. And that's, you know, part of the process. It also can help guide guide our meetings so so often and guide our projects so often we may have an idea and then we move straight to implementation and we haven't gone through the phases of galvanizing and discernment. Or many cases, we also just skip the whole wonder and invention. It's just immediately going to action with things. And that's where you end up having a little bit of a ping ponging. You know, but example is you're planning a big event and the events tomorrow. And, you know, the person that comes up to you and taps on the shoulder and is like, hey, I wonder if, you know, for the event we do this. Well, that should have happened maybe six months ago <laughs> in the brainstorming stage. Now is not the time for the big right. ideas. Yeah. So understanding all of that just gives you the narrative to be able to understand it, talk through it, interact with your team members better, um, hopefully have better projects and better meetings too. Okay. Well, then that again leads me into my next question. So with the working genius model, how does an organization use it to understand how to structure teams and tackle tasks? So again, you know, most of us aren't in working in organizations where we have the ability to just say, hey, here's my working geniuses. This is the work I'm going to do. And, you know, it, that doesn't work. But what organizations can do is look at where as a team, maybe um, they're lower in geniuses. Um, for example, maybe they don't have as many people in the wonder and invention. And there's lots of case studies of that where, um, you know, they, they don't have a lot of team members that have the big ideas. Well, your organization's going to fall aside, fall down if you're not, you know, constantly looking ahead in the big ideas. So then you have discussions related to, okay, how can we channel that? Or do we have to outsource? Do we have to bring in some um, team members to actually help us with that? It can help set up with your norms. It can help set up in an organization what meetings look like. Um, you know, this is a meeting where the goal is really that wonder and invention phase um, before we get down into what the tasks are. Right. OK, so why do you be believe so strongly in this program? I believe really strongly in this program because I believe it it leaves off where all the other personality profile test stop, which is you have a, you know, you do your personality profile, you learn a lot, you have your team retreat, you have these discussions and ideas of, oh yeah, so Sally's an introvert, or we need to be more cautious about, you know, somebody with regard to this or to that. That's just how they operate. That's their personality. 
all that's well and good, but it gets really hard to then implement that and put it into daily life, daily work when you get back because the work itself hasn't changed. Right. Um, th this uh, program, you can very effectively and efficiently make changes and adaptations in a very easy manner, just even through your meetings and understanding going through those six phases is really key. So I think it's a very approachable way with some staying power. Okay. So how can AOE help an organization by using this program? Is there something that AOE offers to clients? Definitely. So I am certified as a facilitator through the table group to uh, facilitate working genius sessions. So if this is something that interests you, reach out to us today. We can talk to you about the opportunity to do a team assessment, to do workshops with your team. There's a lot of follow-up that can be done. Um, even though we're new to this, we've already worked with a couple of clients and they've already come back to us sharing that it's been very, very impactful in a very short amount of time in terms of employee productivity, connection to the work, happiness, team morale, corporate culture, et cetera. So we'd love to talk to you about it. Okay, that sounds great. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you to our audience for listening. If you want to dive more into this um, working genius, you can look at our blog on our website, aoeteam.com. Feel free to reach out to us um, to schedule a meeting to discuss maybe implementing this program in, with your organization. You can reach out to Kimberly, kimberly.kaler at aoeteam.com. Thanks everyone for listening. Thanks, Kimberly, for joining me. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope this session provides value and we hope you will join us for our next podcast.